plants. Let us discuss the post-fertilization changes occurring in angiospermic plants. In our previous lectures, we have discussed the mechanism of double fertilization and we have also studied the outcome of double fertilization in case of angiosperm is two different things. First is called a zygote and another is called as primary endosperm nucleus where the zygote is the outcome of syngamy and primary endosperm nucleus is the result of triple fusion. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the development of endosperm as well as embryo from primary endosperm nucleus and zygote respectively. The steps we are going to discuss in this lecture are development of endosperm we are going to study this step first because this is the nutritive tissue and it is produced before well before than that of embryo formation and the second step we are going to discuss is embryogenesis which is nothing but development of embryo in angiosperms let us discuss these steps one by one let us discuss the development of endosperm first. In due course of double fertilization in angiosperm, one male gamete fuses with secondary nucleus to produce the primary endosperm nucleus. This process is called as triple fusion, where haploid nucleus is fuses fusing with two haploid nuclei of secondary nucleus to produce the triploid primary endosperm nucleus. This structure, what we call it as primary endosperm nucleus, it will divide and redivide to produce the nutritive tissue, which is called as endosperm. On the basis of division followed by primary endosperm nucleus, there are three different types of endosperms occurring or seen in the angiosperm. So the basis of classification is very important, and that basis is type or mode of division which is followed by the primary endosperm nucleus. So there are three different types of endosperm. The first one is called as nuclear endosperm. The second one is called as cellular endosperm. And the third one is called as halobial endosperm. So we have to remember the basis of classification and that is nothing but type or mode of the division which is followed by primary endosperm nucleus. Now we are going to discuss all these three types in detail, how the division occur and occurrence of this type of endosperm which is seen in certain groups of plant. With respect to these aspects we are going to discuss, we are starting with the first that is called as nuclear endosperm. The first type, nuclear endosperm. Before that, we have already studied that in the course of double fertilization, zygote is produced at micropylar end because the egg apparatus is present at the micropylar end and the endosperm or primary endosperm nucleus which is developed at the center because the central cell consists of the secondary nucleus. So these are two polar nuclei and those are fusing with single male gamete at this particular end already the zygote is formed and this is the site where the fusion triple fusion is seen and the structure which is collectively formed here it is called as primary endosperm nucleus so these are the locations where zygote and pen respectively are present now this primary endosperm nucleus will undergo the free nuclear division. Repeated divisions are seen. Now you already studied the cell division, mechanism of cell division in your previous syllabus and you are very aware of that. Cell division generally occurs in two steps. One is called as karyokinesis and followed by cytokinesis in which karyokinesis is related with the division of nucleus and cytokinesis is nothing but division of cytoplasm or formation of new cells. 
But in case of free nuclear divisions, in the development of nuclear endosperm, primary endosperm nucleus will divide repeatedly without undergoing cytokinesis. So only karyokinesis is seen. Now see how the appearance is there. This primary endosperm nucleus will divide and re-divide to produce many nuclei, but cells are not formed. Many nuclei are formed without formation of cell directly. So this type of division is called as the free nuclear division. Once the karyokinesis is over, then slowly and gradually every nucleus gathers certain amount of cytoplasm around it and start producing these cells later on. So the course which is karyokinesis followed by cytokinesis is not seen in this kind of development. Here firstly many nuclei are formed free nuclei are formed by repeated divisions and later on the cell formation is seen in this way and finally the entire place is covered by the nutritive tissue which is called as endosperm. So here the division is a free nuclear type of division so the new endosperm is called as nuclear endosperm. Very important concept about this, very important information regarding this uh, nuclear endosperm is this is the most common type which is seen in angiosperm. Many plants, several dicots and monocots, they show the development of endosperm in nuclear way or by means of free nuclear division. The best example we can consider and that is coconut. The tender coconut, the green coconut in our local language which is called as shahana, it is having large amount of water and less amount of uh, that endosperm which is developed. But slowly and gradually the amount of water is reduced and the tissue which is formed inside which is slowly gradually increases. The water which is present in the coconut, it consists of free nuclei. So the best example of nuclear endosperm is coconut. Slowly gradually the nuclei present in the water, they are gathering the cytoplasm and the cell formation is seen. So lastly, finally, the amount of tissue which is increased, what we call it as in our local language which is called as cobra, so which is increased in size and water content is slowly gradually decreases. So this type of free nuclear division is very common in angiosperm and that's why nuclear endosperm is more common in occurrence in case of angiospermic plants. Now the second type of endosperm development is cellular endosperm. Let us discuss about this. Number two, cellular endosperm. In case of cellular endosperm, the karyokinesis is immediately followed by cytokinesis in case of the course of cell division. See, as we have discussed, the micropylar end, the chalazal end, and this particular region, the zygote is present. This structure is called as primary endosperm nucleus. Now, this primary endosperm nucleus will start the division and show cytokinesis right from the beginning. It will not follow the free nuclear divisions, but the course of division is like this. Suppose this nucleus will divide and immediately form the cell. Again, the division is seen. Immediately, cell formation is seen. Similarly, many cells are formed to produce the nutritive tissue, what we call it as endosperm. So in this case, cytokinesis or formation of cell which is seen right from the beginning. Both these steps are subsequently occur karyokinesis followed by cytokinesis. That type of endosperm in which cell formation is seen right from the beginning is called as cellular endosperm. This is the less common or you can say quite rare kind of endosperm which is seen in the angiospermic plants and this type of endosperm is only occur in case of dicots. This aspect is very important because nuclear endosperm is more common. It is seen in dicots as well as in monocots. But cellular endosperm is less common. Rather, it is rare and mostly seen in case of dicot plants only, not in monocots. So this one is the second type and that is called as cellular endosperm. 
the third and last type of endosperm is called as halobial endosperm. Third one, halobial endosperm. And the name of this endosperm is quite interesting and it is derived from a name of series of the plant and that series is called as halobi series. This is the group of plant which is seen in case of monocots. In case of taxonomic hierarchy we have seen one of the taxonomic categories is series. Such a series in case of monocot, one series is there and that is called as halobi series. Halobi series consist of variety of different families. I am going to write few. That is not much important for you to remember. But if you remember, that is the icing on the cake. That is better than the best. Certain families which belong to Halobi are Alismatesi. This is the family of aquatic plant. Then Pantaderiaceae, Hydrocaritaceae. Etc. These families, and now here C E A E, this suffix is there which is indicating the level of family, the taxonomic category which is the family. So these families belong to Halobi series, all these are the monocot families, and only in this particular series, the Halobian type of endosperm development is seen. So this is the very interesting type of development. Let us discuss. This is the embryo sac after fertilization. At micropylar end, the location of zygote is here, and this is the region of primary endosperm nucleus. Now, the first division in case of primary endosperm nucleus or the central cell occur unequally to produce two chambers, and these chambers are like this. It is appearing like this. Two chambers are formed. The larger chamber is at micropylar region and the smaller chamber is at the chalazal end. Now here the division occur to produce two unequal chambers and the further division occur as a free nuclear division as we have seen in the first time. So here free nuclear division will occur and later on which is followed by cytokinesis collectively to produce the tissue to produce the endosperm. So this is a quite different type of development where chamber formation is seen and followed by free nuclear division which is occur. Such type of endosperm development is only only seen in halobi series of monocot and on the basis of this particular series the endosperm is ideally called as halobial endosperm. So these are three different types of endosperm. Nuclear endosperm which is more common seen in dicots as well as monocots. Cellular endosperm is less common, quite rare, and it is only seen in dicots. Halobial endosperm, it is also rare and only seen in a restricted group of angiospermic plants, which belong to halobi series of the monocot. This is all about the development of endosperm. So we have completed one event in the post-fertilization changes, and that is nothing but endosperm. Now what is the role of endosperm? Endosperm is a nutritive tissue and it provides nourishment to the developing embryo. And suppose if it is remain after the growth of uh, embryo inside the cell, that will again utilize in the development of seedling or growth of seedling at the time of germination. So endosperm, it may be utilized completely for the development of embryo or can be stored after the development of embryo in certain plant species. On the basis of this occurrence, this particular pattern, seeds are categorized into two different types. Let us discuss those types. The first type, on the basis of occurrence of endosperm, the first type of seed is called as endospermic seeds. In case of endospermic seed, the endosperm is retained in the seed even after its utilization for the embryo development. So in such seeds, endosperm is retained till maturity. The best example of endospermic seed is castor. 
here endosperm is also called as albumen and therefore endospermic seeds are called as albuminous seeds. So in this case you can uh, say the embryo which is present inside in, in a funny way you can discuss the embryo which is present inside seed it is not that greedy it will utilize the endosperm but some amount of endosperm is still retained in the seed up to maturity which is further developed in the development and growth of the seedling. Endospermic seeds are also known as albuminous seed and the best example is castor. There are many more other examples of endospermic seed like orchid seeds uh, are there, then uh, tomato seeds are there, there uh, endosperm is present till maturity. The second type of seed on the basis of occurrence of endosperm is called as non-endospermic seeds. Now here non-endospermic seed is related with endosperm is absent but that is not the appropriate definition here endosperm is absent at maturity because angiospermic plants they ought to develop the endosperm at the time of double fertilization but in some cases endosperm is completely utilized in the process of embryo formation in development of embryo and so at maturity endosperm is completely absent in the seeds. Such seeds are called as non-endospermic seeds. Now the best example you can see the peanut, groundnut you can say or the common one is the pea, green peas as we have uh, seen. So this is the best example of non-endospermic seed. Here albumin or endosperm is absent or it was present previously and absent at maturity and therefore it is called as ex albuminous seeds. How to identify the albuminous seed and ex albuminous seed? So here endosperm is present in the seed at maturity. So for the development or growth of the seedling endosperm is available. So there is no need of storing food material in the cotyledons. And so, in case of endospermic seed, the cotyledons, they are thin and papery. But in case of non-endospermic seed, as endosperm is absent at maturity, the food which is stored for the purpose of growth and development of seedling, that will be stored inside the cotyledon. So in case of non-endospermic seed, the cotyledons, they are thick and fleshy as they are storing ample amount of food material. So on the basis of nature of cotyledon, you can easily identify the type of seed whether it is endospermic or it is non-endospermic. The second event in post fertilization changes is called as embryogenesis. It is the process of development of embryo from single celled diploid zygote. Now let us discuss how it is occurring in the angiosperms. The diagrammatic representation I am going to show you here. It is the embryo sac after double fertilization. This one is the micropylar end. This is the chalazal end. This is the site where zygote is present. And the rest of the region of the embryo sac is now completely filled with endosperm as we have studied just a while before. For the sake of understanding, I am going to invert this diagram likewise. So the appearance of the diagram now, it will be, this is the micropylar end, this is the chalazal end. This particular region, this particular site is the site of zygote and the rest of this region is filled with the endosperm. Now let us discuss how embryogenesis occurs in angiosperm. The zygote, which is single cell diploid structure, present at the micropylar end in the embryo sac. This particular cell secretes a thick wall around it and gets converted to a structure which is called as oospore. So this is the thick wall formation around the zygote and now onwards the zygote is called as oospore. This oospore will show the transverse and unequal division to produce two cells. Let us discuss how exactly it is. This is the oospore. This oospore will show a type of division which is transverse or it is also called as 
peritoneal type of division. You can use both the words. So the first division which is occurring in zygote is transverse division or it is a peritoneal division and it is unequal. So the outcome is two cells obviously but these two cells are not same in shape and size. They are unequal in their sizes. So it will divide like this to produce the larger cell and a small cell like this. So this larger cell which is situated at micropylar end and the smaller cell is present at chanasal end. The large cell which is produced is called as suspensor cell. So suspensor cell located at micropylar region it will be present somewhere at this particular point and the small cell which is present here it is called as embryonal cell. This embryonal cell is located or it is towards or facing towards the chalazal cell, chalazal end. And this is the first event which is occurring in the process of embryo formation. Later on, what will happen? Let us discuss in detail. Further, the suspensor cell which is already present at the micropylar end in the diagrammatic representation you can observe like this. Now this one is the micropylar end. This large cell is called as the suspensor cell. I am showing here SC which is related with the suspensor cell. And the small cell which is present at the tip and that is called as embryonal cell. I am going to show it uh, after showing the divisions which are occurring in the suspensor cell. Now focus here, the suspensor cell which is large in size, which is present at the micropylar region, that will undergo repeated transverse division. So here the divisions are transverse to produce a long structure, see the transverse division like this, to produce many cells. So this structure is a 7 to 10 cell long suspensor is formed here. Here the division, type of division is transverse obviously. So the suspensor cell will divide and re-divide transversely to produce a 7 to 10 cell long suspensor. And at the end, at the tip of this suspensor, there is a very small cell and that cell is called as embryonal cell as we have discussed in the earlier type of division. Now what is the purpose of formation of suspensor? Just think, basically the zygote or embryonal cell is present at the peripheral region, at the outer side and the central core is completely filled with the nutritive tissue which is called as endosperm. The purpose of suspensor is to push the embryonal cell at the center of embryo sac where endosperm is present so that this particular cell can derive nutrition from all the sites for its proper growth and development. So suspensor is produced, suspensor is formed which is suspending the embryonal cell at the center of embry endosperm for the proper nutrition or for the proper nourishment of the embryonal cell. So this is the second event which is formation or development of the suspensor. Now let us focus the exact events related with the formation of embryo, embryo or which is called as embryogenesis. In the next phase, the embryonal cell which is now present at the center here, it will divide anticlinally or vertically. So here this cell is going to divide by a vertical division or another word is anticlinal division to produce two cells. Now the suspensor is obviously present here. This cell will divide vertically to produce two cells like this. Now the two cells are present at the tip of suspensor. From this two cell onward this structure is called as pro-embryo. Now this pro-embryo again show divisions and redivisions vertically to produce four cells and then eight cell the structure which is called as octant. Let us discuss. This is the pro-embryo. 
which is present here. Now it will divide to produce the four cell structure like this at the tip of suspensor followed by the eight cell structure which is producing the globose shape and that is called as octant. Now this octant will divide and re-divide to produce the cell mass and it will go or form a globose structure. The globose structure, the rounded structure will further divide, further show divisions of the cell to produce a typical or a specific structure which is heart shape. How this is so? See, I'm going to show this particular type of growth and development here in the diagrammatic representation. Suppose this is the globe, the globo structure which is formed by cell mass at the tip of suspensor. Now, in this case, cell division is more in this region and less in this particular region. So, the globose structure will grow like this to produce a shape which is quite similar to that of heart. So more growth is seen in this particular region, less growth is seen in the middle region and therefore the shape which is attained in the next level of the embryogenesis or embryo formation is heart shape. Now see the beauty, the next steps I'm going to show here. The growth further exceeds more in this particular region and less in this particular region and it will appear like a structure which is horseshoe shape this structure is obviously situated or attached to the suspensor the suspensor is connected to the micropylar end by means of a large cell which is called as hostorium which is providing the nourishment or support to the structure. Next to that there is a suspensor and at the suspensor previously there are two cells pro-embryo which will divide to produce four cell structure then eight cell structure which is octant that will subsequently grow in the size to produce the globose. Globose structure is further converted to heart shaped structure and this heart shaped structure further show growth in a particular fashion to produce a structure which is horseshoe shape. You can see the shape. Again. Now at this particular end there is a location of radical which is further or in future which is growing in roots then at this particular region, this particular aid, it is the size site of plimule in future which is going to develop the shoot system and at the first node of the embryo there is occurrence of these two prolonged structure these are called as cotyledons so in case of dicot there are two cotyledons and in case of monocot only single is well developed and one remains rudimentary underdeveloped. So in case of dicot there is occurrence of two cotyledons and in case of monocot there is a single cotyledon. This is the entire process, entire development of the embryo in angiosperm. I am going to revise it in the form of list. The diagram is there in the books, in your notes, you can uh, go through it. But this is a very peculiar uh, course of development. You have to remember different stages which are seen in the embryogenesis like octant stage, globose, heart shape and lastly the horseshoe shape. The location of a radical and plimule, occurrence of cotyledon. See the beauty, the growth which is extended here more in amount to produce the cotyledonary structure. And that is the beauty. Role of suspensor is again very important. Let us summarize the different events occurring in embryogenesis of the angiospermic plants. So here, firstly, the zygote, which will secrete a thick wall around itself to produce the oospore. Oospore will divide transversely or you can say periclinally as we have discussed to produce two cell structure which is called as pro-embryo. Now this pro-embryo will divide to form the four cell structure. Four cell structure divide to form the octant, the eight cell structure. Octant will divide to form the cell mass and which is globose. 
Now this globose structure is further developed, divide and re-divide to form many cells in unequal way to produce the heart shaped structure. And this heart shaped structure further developed to form the horse shoe shaped structure and which consists of the embryo axis with radical remove two cotyledons in case of dicots and one cotyledon in case of monocots. Divisions are very important. Here the division type which is seen in case of zygote, the first division is transverse, periclinal and essentially it is unequal. Now I have discussed about pro-embryo. Now this pro-embryo will divide by vertical division or by means of anticlinal you can use another word so these are the important events sometimes they will ask you the different shapes seen in the embryo development so the correct sequence is globose heart shape and lastly it is the horseshoe shape this is all about the embryogenesis in angiospermic plants now we are going to discuss the parts of the flower which are present before fertilization and conversion of uh, those parts or the fate of those parts after fertilization. So we are going to form two columns here like before and after. The first one, the calyx which is the part of accessory oral of the flower. After fertilization it is generally fall off or sometimes it becomes persistent like you have seen in case of family Sudanese, the calyx may persist in fruits also. Corolla, it is obviously fallen off. Stamens, again they are fall off. Ovary, after fertilization, it is converted to fruit. Ovary wall is converted to into pericarp or which is also called as the fruit wall. Ovule, it is converted to seed. Different parts of ovule like hilum of the ovule is converted into hilum of the seed, funicle of the ovule is converted to funicle of the seed, micropyle of the ovule is again seed in case of micropyle of the seed. Outer integument is converted into the outer seed coat which is called as testa which is thick and impervious to water. Inner integument is converted into the inner seed coat and which is called as tegmen. So these are the layer of seed coat. The tegmen is thin. Nucellus, it is generally utilized, it is generally degenerated, but sometimes it remains as a perisperm, a sort of third integument in some plants. The best example is lychee, and another examples you can say the myestica, the nutmeg, where perisperm is present as it is, the remnant of nucellus is seen, and that is called as perisperm. So here, these particular points, the nucellus is persistent in some cases, which is called as perisperm. Calyx is persistent in some case of plant like solanaceae. These parts are important for your multiple choice type of questions. Egg at the after fertilization which is firstly converted into zygote which is further developed into embryo. The secondary nucleus is firstly converted to primary endosperm nucleus and later on it is converted to the nutritive tissue which is called as endosperm. And lastly antipodals and synergids these are the haploid cells present in the embryo sac after fertilization they get degenerated. So the, this is the fate of different parts of flower and at the minute details we have seen like in case of cells of embryo sac, how they are converted and what is the fate of these parts after fertilization. So this is showing the before these parts and their fate after the fertilization. The seeds which are produced after double fertilization, after post fertilization changes and events in the angiosperm they show a very peculiar characteristic features and those are summarized here on the board. The first important characteristic feature of angiospermic seed is they show dormancy. The dormancy is nothing but the temporary suspension of growth of the embryo. 
and that is very important to store the seed for a longer duration as and when they will get the favorable condition the embryo becomes active and it will start its germination otherwise it will show the resting state or the temporary suspension of the growth which is called as dormancy in some seeds like mangrove seeds they are not showing dormancy they are without any resting periods such seeds are called as recalcitrant seeds we are going to focus this point in forthcoming lectures the second important characteristic feature of the angiospermic seed is viability viability is the functional ability of the seed or the embryo which is present inside the seed to germinate or to grow after completion of the dormancy period so viability is nothing but the overcoming the dormancy or after completion of dormancy period the embryo starts its growth and that is called as viability third important characteristic feature is reserve food material reserve food material in case of seeds is stored either in endosperm in case of endospermic seed or if the seed is non endospermic now it is stored in the cotyledons the fruit uh, reserve food material stored in the seed is either in the form of carbohydrates or it is in the form of proteins or it is from the form in the form of fats next important characteristic feature of seed is protected coats or protective layers seed coat is having two different layers the outer seed coat and the inner seed coat the outer seed coat is called as testa and the inner one is called as tegmen so these are the two seed coats which are present in seeds of the angiosperm the angiospermic ovule is called as bitegmic ovule having two integuments outer and inner and so the seed coat it is also two layered which is showing testa which is outer and tegmen which is the inner seed coat lastly angiospermic seeds show dispersal they get dispersed to a long distance either by active way or by passive way they are dispersed actively or passively we are stating few example for example the crossandra in our language which is called as aboli when you touch the fruit it will burst open to ejaculate the seed with a great force and that is called as ejaculator mechanism or shotgun mechanism so such seed is thrown out with a great force to a long distance to produce the new plant away from the mother plant one another best example is impatience the plant which is holy or sacred which is uh, worshiped in our houses in the ganpati festival which is uh, that plant is commonly called as gauri the fruit when you touch the capsule it will burst open to release the seeds so that is the active mechanism at maturity that will burst open to release the seeds passively in some cases the seeds are um, dispersed with a long distance by means of birds by means of other animals so anyway actively or passively the angiospermic seeds are dispersed to a long distance and that is the reason why angiosperms are dominant plants on the planet earth so these are the different characteristic features of the seeds of angiosperms further we are going to discuss apomixis and polyembryo we have already studied that apomixis it means without fertilization and that concept is included in a sexual reproduction now why we are focusing this concept in sexual reproduction in the flowering plant we are going to focus we are going to study those concepts in detail in the further part of our lecture apomixis before studying what is apomixis we must know what is parthenocarpy parthenocarpy is nothing but formation of fruit without fertilization so it is the process of fruit formation where fertilization is not seen without fertilization that is called as parthenocarpy parthenocarpy is naturally seen for example banana is a naturally parthenocarpic fruit or you can apply auxins and gibberellin like phytohormones to produce the parthenocarpic fruits so parthenocarpic fruits those are seedless so this is the first aspect now let us discuss what do you mean by apomixis in case of the sexual reproduction of the flowering plant 
outcome of the sexual reproduction is seed, obviously, which is not seen in case of a sexual reproduction. But here, in case of apomixis, seen is seed formation. Focus this particular point. Parthenocarpy is related with fruit formation. Apomixis in sexual reproduction, reproductive mechanism of the angiospermic plant is related with seed formation, but without fertilization. Now, in this case, the ovule will produce the egg which is diploid without undergoing the meiotic division. Basically, egg is haploid cell which will further fuses with the male gamete to produce the diploid zygote and therefore the seed which is formed is the result of the fusion. But here in this case, egg which is produced that is diploid and this diploid egg is further developed into the embryo and thereby the formation of seed. Such a seed is formed without fertilization and therefore it is called as, the process is called as apomixis and such a seeds are called as apomictic seeds. So these two concepts, apomictic seeds can be used for generations together, generation after generation because there is no segregation of characters as fertilization or mixing or fusion of the gamete is absent. The next aspect to discuss is polyembryony. In case of polyembryony, the ovule consists of more than one embryo. We have already discussed that single ovule basically consists of single embryo. And we have also studied that polyembryony in normal angiosperm is prevented by utilizing both the male gamete. One is fusing with egg to produce the zygote and thereby embryo. Another is fusing with secondary nucleus to produce the endosperm. Then how? more embryos are formed in the single ovule we are going to discuss basically polyembryony is nothing but the condition where a single ovule consists of more than one embryo uh, in this case see the structure of ovule is like this the anatropous ovule the central core is called as nucellus it is protected by means of the integuments and this region is called as micropyle. The embryo sac which is present here in this particular region and this is the location of egg cell which is further converted into zygote. The remaining structure central cell with the triploid primary endosperm nucleus is further developed into endosperm. Now under certain conditions the cells from the outer core which is called as nucellus, they are start entering into the embryo sac. These cells will enter inside the embryo sac and divide and redivide to produce the embryo. In such cases, this embryo sac or this ovule consists of more than one embryo. Now, these embryos are basically produced from nucellus or sometimes the cells from integuments they may also enter inside the embryo sac to produce the multiple embryos and what we call it as polyembryon. Such kind of embryo development is called as adventive polyembryon. So what do you mean by adventive polyembryony? It is nothing but formation of more than one embryo and such embryos are or these embryos are basically formed by the cells from nucellus as well as from integument. So embryo these are called as adventive embryos and the phenomenon is called as adventive polyembryony. The adventive polyembryony is first time reported in the plant like citrus. The citrus plants they are basically shows the polyembryo, many embryos per ovule and such embryos are called as adventive embryos produced from the cells of nucellus as well as integuments by the mechanism which is called as adventive polyembryon. With this, we have completed our entire topic reproduction in flowering plants in detail. You have to study this concept, uh, these uh, all these concepts, you have to go through all the lectures we are, which are provided to you. Uh, listen those lectures thoroughly read your books and notes completely and try to achieve that try to solve the questions which are provided to you in the form of question bank thank you